Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. CNN's left-right crossfire has been off air for a while, maybe because there was no way to debate a missing airplane. But the show's back, and on May 6th, they focused on another issue that you might hope would be beyond the realm of the two sides kind of TV debate, climate change. The show pitted TV scientist Bill Nye against Nick Loris of the Conservative Heritage Foundation, which has been a key player in the climate change denial industry, receiving money from energy companies and the Koch brothers. Loris himself worked for the Koch's foundation. Like others in the denial industry, Loris was quick to point out that he isn't. I'm not a denier. I'm not a skeptic. For someone who's not a climate change denier, he sure sounded like one. The, the policy prescriptions, these greenhouse gas regulations coming down, uh, prohibiting building new coal-fired power plants, is just going to make us less equipped, less economically prosperous to handle these problems. I mean, we've had this 16 to 17 year hiatus in warming. We've had Arctic okay. ice globally increasing. These are familiar talking points for climate change denialists, and they're very misleading, maybe especially that one about there being a pause in warming. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time that Crossfire has made things seem more debatable than they really are. Back in January, whether or not the planet was warming was back on the table because it was cold out. Polio, once battled to near extinction, is making a comeback, according to the World Health Organization, which, citing 68 new cases this year, has declared an international public health emergency. This was big news, and a big part of the news was that 80 percent of those cases are in Pakistan. The New York Times explained, Polio has never been eliminated there. Taliban factions have forbidden vaccinations in North Waziristan for years, and those elsewhere have murdered vaccine teams. On CBS Evening News. Most cases are in Pakistan where vaccine workers have been murdered on suspicion that they're spying for the United States. There's crucial information missing here. In 2011, The Guardian revealed that the CIA used a fake vaccination drive to gain entry to Osama bin Laden's compound and gather DNA to confirm his presence there. The Guardian's reporting made it into The New York Times, which itself has reported several times on killings of polio vaccination workers in Pakistan, noting that these attacks escalated after the revelation of the CIA plot. These are familiar facts in the press corps, but PBS's NewsHour was one of few outlets not to conveniently forget the CIA's role when reporting on the new crisis. Finally, no one tunes in to morning news shows expecting much by way of news, but you do hope that normal journalistic conventions still apply, airing what amounts to an infomercial for your corporate parent, for example. That's still wrong, right? Well, here's ABC's Good Morning America with a big scoop on May 2nd. And we've got breaking news from Disney. It starts May 28th to the public, and I got a little sneak peek among so many other things. Check it out. There's a new kind of magic at the Walt Disney World Resorts, ABC's Ginger Z enthused. A new wristband, a new ride, and a parade. A land of fantasy, growing bigger and helping our imaginations grow bigger every year. What viewers did not learn is that Disney owns ABC. Well, if the show dropped the disclosure in that segment, it's not because they don't know how to do them. Lately, ABC's news division has been working hard to promote Star Wars, another Disney property, and they've acknowledged that corporate connection. And there was this from a Good Morning America segment on the new installment in the Star Wars series. The release date for the movie, produced by our parent company, Disney, is, I'm afraid, far, far away. December next year. May the force be with you during the wait. Something tells us ABC's news division will keep us updated. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.